On the previous worksheet, we were looking at product space. Now we're going to look at input space. There are two inputs, capital and labor. They are both variable here. So this is a long run picture. Uh, for one second, I'm not going to belabor this. Let me show you the production function that is uh, underlying the uh, graph here. So Q represents output. Um, and the function is k to the alpha times l to the 1 minus alpha. That's called a Cobb-Douglas production function. So we're using Cobb-Douglas to generate these isoquants. Um, the isoquant looks and behaves identically to indifference curves for the consumer. Uh, so since you know indifference curves already, we're going to speed through this a little bit. Let me also show you the other controls you have here, and um, we'll get to the price part in a minute, but you have one that controls output. So if you increase output, we'll look at that. The other is to change this alpha parameter um, and see what that looks like. So let me show you both of those. I'm going to um, increase Q and the entire um, isoquant moves out and now I'm going to lower Q back and the um, isoquant moves inward. If you change alpha, you're, we're not changing output now, but we're changing how important capital is. I'm increasing the importance of capital in production and it rotates the isoquant this way. Uh, this point is obviously a point on the isoquant, and this tangent line, the absolute value of its slope is called the rate of technical substitution. Um, we don't call it the marginal rate of substitution like we do for the consumer, just to indicate this is for the firm rather than for the consumer, but it behaves exactly like the marginal rate of substitution for the um, consumer, the theory of isoquants is pretty similar to the theory of indifference curves. Um, now let's show what's different. I had the ISO cost or ISO expenditure on input lines turned off. Let me turn them on now. And let's go back to the graph. So we're back here and now I have these ISO cost lines, ISO, these represent equal levels of expenditure. Each line has constant expenditure on it. And the firm's goal is to get to the lowest expenditure to produce the given output. If you remember, the consumer's problem was to get to the highest indifference curve for a given ex uh, budget line. Here, the firm's goal is to produce the given output at the least cost. And we're going to try to find that. So let's see if we can find the control for moving the point, which is over here. And I'm going to move it, but um, let's see if I can do this. It's actually a little bit too low for me here. Here we go. So I'm going to move the point. And if I move it to the right, we're getting closer. Oops, we went too far. That. It doesn't look like it can be perfect here right now, but that looks about right. To minimize cost on a given isoquant, the iso cost line should be tangent to the uh, indifference curve. That is, the rate of technical substitution should equal the factor price ratios. Capital and labor are called factors of production. Their relative price should equal the rate of technical substitution at the cost min.